It's been already two years since my last video about uh, creative apps on the iPad. Back then I concluded that we were headed in a good direction, but we weren't there yet. The experience was still lacking. I'll have a link of that video in the description below. So. Now, two years after, where do we stand? If you're a graphic designer and you want to ditch your computer and just use the iPad, can you do that? Let's find out. The quick answer is no, we're not there yet. We're awfully close, but we still have some work ahead of us. The longer answer though is more complicated. There are mainly three issues at play here. The first issue has to do with the development process of the apps. The next one has to do with the OS's limitations. And the last piece of the puzzle is the feature set of the software available. Let's go through them one by one. In my opinion, developers still haven't unlocked the best way to build apps with the screen and hardware limitations of the iPad in mind. Even though the iPad is already 11 years old, I feel like we're still figuring out how to best approach professional apps on the iPad. This reminds me of the pains we had to go through in the early days of 3D gaming. No one back then knew exactly how to approach camera controls. Until then, developers only knew how to do things in 2D, so the third dimension was completely foreign. So in those early days, everyone approached things differently. Some games had uh, camera angles changing depending on the location of the character, others required manual adjustment by the player, it was all over the place. It took quite a few years to figure out how to approach this problem. This is where we are now as far as app development for tablets goes. We're still early in the process, so every developer is trying out their own approach to UI and workflows. For example, Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo went the UI shrinking route. They basically shrunk down the desktop interface without really trying to introduce new workflows that would work best on a small screen. They do have some nice touch-based workflows, but the interface feels more suited to a desktop rather than a tablet. And this is one of the reasons the UI feels incredibly cluttered. In their effort to declutter the UI, they decided to move secondary information to nested menus, which only made things worse. As you can imagine, digging into these menus is not fun. Important information is hidden and the user has to spend more time on simple tasks. Adobe's iPad versions of Photoshop and Illustrator went the completely opposite way. They've redesigned the interface of both apps with the iPad in mind and tried to implement as many touch workflows as possible. But in that process, they've completely alienated experienced desktop users and also completely neglected perfectly working input methods such as keyboard shortcuts. Illustrator for the iPad, for example, has only a few of the desktop's keyboard shortcuts which is extremely frustrating. Something that can be done with a simple key press now takes a lot longer to do. Adobe is being very aggressive in decluttering the iPad's small screen. They hide most of the UI panels and in the process they hide important information. In Illustrator, for example, we have this constant dance with the interface where opening up one panel hides another one. We also cannot keep some of the interface elements open, once we click out of the UI element, the pop-up is gone. It would be great if we could detach the pop-ups and leave them permanently on the working area similar to the desktop application. Adobe is almost too afraid to have multiple panels open at once. Both approaches, Affinities and Adobe's, lead to frustrating experiences. Both of them still haven't found the perfect recipe, a way to display all the information a user might need in an interface that won't feel cramped. Granted, it's a tough challenge, but I feel we're moving a little bit too slow on that front. Serifs and Adobe's UI decisions have a huge impact on the user. Things just take a lot longer to do on the iPad compared to the desktop. Even simple tasks that take a second on the desktop will take multiple taps and digging into nested menus on the iPad. The experience is so frustrating that at times I just prefer to not work on the iPad at all and just do things on the desktop. For me, Procreate and Shaper 3D are the best examples of good UI and workflow on the iPad. They do have their own UI issues, but it feels like they're much more successful at finding out workflows that are good for this screen size. Procreate has a more limited toolset, so that definitely works to its advantage, but still, the whole experience feels very organic and you're not feeling like you're constantly fighting with the interface. Hopefully, in the coming years, we will get to a point where workflows and interfaces are more refined. At the moment, we have to deal with what we've got. 
The iPad is a super capable device. It has a really strong SoC with powerful processing and graphics capabilities. But it still has some limitations that purely stem from Apple's stubbornness. Thankfully, the missing pieces are not that many, but they're important enough to prohibit the iPad serving truly professional apps. Support for keyboards, mice, and external disks is already there and working great. We can easily attach an external drive, grab whatever file is needed, and continue working on our project. We can also connect to a NAS, transfer files to the iPad, or even work directly with a NAS. Everything works as expected, and to be honest, it's quite awesome to see all these things working so well. But then we hit these barriers that shouldn't have been there in the first place. Let's take as an example memory. Until recently, memory on the iPad was quite limited. As a user, you didn't experience that, but this restricted the developers from serving truly powerful apps. Due to the iPad's very tight integration of hardware and software, iOS developers could still do a whole lot with little memory. But no matter how great iOS's memory management is, some things just require a whole lot of RAM. Most iPads have 4GB of memory. Only very recently, like 2 years ago, we got to see some iPads get 6GB of RAM. And finally, in 2021, we got the very first iPad with 16GB of memory. But even these 16GB models could only devote 5GB of RAM per application. iOS 15 lifted this restriction, and apps can now use 12GB of memory. But it shouldn't have taken that long. 12GB of RAM is a huge improvement, but it's still not enough. Big Photoshop files can chew through that very easily. I'm not talking about low resolution files with 6 layers. I'm talking about production files with hundreds of layers, smart objects, and huge resolutions. These files will need a lot more than just 12GB. The same goes for 3D objects, whether that is sculpting a multi-million polygon mesh or loading a heavy FBX sequence. No matter how you cut it, you just need more memory. In order for the iPad to go to the next level and truly be a professional tool, we need 32 and 64 gigabytes of RAM. And of course, have the OS allow the apps to use all of that memory iOS is also a bit stingy on virtual memory, which would help a lot when apps would run out of RAM, especially considering that all iPads have really fast storage. But memory aside, there's also one other thing that truly prohibits the development of professional apps, and that is support for external displays. Currently, when you hook up an iPad to a monitor, you just get your screen mirrored. What we need is a true extension mode where the monitor can run on its native resolution and the UI hungry apps can take full advantage of that extra real estate, which will also allow the users to work more comfortably. That alone will unlock the potential of the iPad and will allow a lot of graphic designers to just have an iPad as their main computer. The iPad has the necessary graphics power to drive an external monitor, it's just a matter of adding that functionality to the OS. The past couple of years we got to see some very feature-rich iPad apps. We still though have a long way to go, but some tasks can already be done without any limitations. For example, photo editing. Lightroom for the iPad is a great example of that. The app is not much different than the desktop one. We can pretty much do everything the desktop app does. Pixelmator Photo is another alternative that is also capable enough. So if you're a creative professional doing these types of tasks, you're all set. You could in theory work off of an iPad. The more involved part of photo editing though, and I mean Photoshop levels of manipulation, is a completely different story. Photoshop is available on the iPad, but I wouldn't recommend using it. It's extremely limited and it comes with a UI that will infuriate you in a matter of minutes. It's also missing a ton of features. Affinity Photo compared to Photoshop is more feature complete, but we still have to fight the awkward interface. At least I don't enjoy working with the app. In this use case, I see the iPad only as an addition to the desktop, doing some things on the iPad while on the road, and then when back in the office, doing the rest on the desktop. So if you're doing a lot of Photoshop work, you cannot really rely on the iPad alone. When it comes to vector apps, things are much better. Adobe's Illustrator is very capable, and Affinity Designer is equally strong. There are features missing on both apps, but it's not a crippling experience. We can still do quite a lot of things before we hit a wall. 
Font management, for example, is an issue. Adobe has a workflow that allows for font activation of your collection, but it's clunky. It's nothing like a desktop font management system, but no matter the limitations, we can still work around them. The main issue with the vector apps is the UI approach that at times can be frustrating. As I mentioned earlier, Illustrator is missing several important keyboard shortcuts, like the option to move an object with the return key. The only way to do it is in a very slow way. So for vector apps, things are mostly there. The main problem is the workflow and UI. If I was doing only vector work, would I use the iPad as my main device? Probably not, but it's awfully close. So to sum things up, Creative Pro apps on the iPad are in a good enough state, but to truly go to the next level that will allow us to have an iPad as the main device, several changes need to happen. I feel that some of these changes will take longer, but it really depends on how Apple views the iPad. Is it only a secondary device, or is Apple interested in pushing it as a truly professional tool? If Apple chose the latter, I feel things could progress really fast. Developers would instantly jump on it, and we would see an amazing pace in development. I really hope that in the next few years we will be able to see some of these things in action. Video editing, 3D, and several other areas are underrepresented on the tablet space, so if things go well, we might be able to see some exciting developments in the future. But only time will tell. And that's it for this video. Are you happy with the current creative apps on the iPad? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.